Hey guys, Brian Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. What I wanted to do today was kind of go over a little bit about me. Because, not because I like to talk about me, because I really don't. Rusty, don't laugh. You saw the camera kind of shaking a little bit because he, we're on the suspended mat here in the Flower Mound studio and he's, yeah, you see it kind of shaking there. Because he's laughing because of what I said. I get no respect here. So anyway, I really don't like talking about myself. I like to talk, but not so much about myself. But a lot of you might be wondering, you know, who is Ryan Young? Who is this guy? And who is this guy, you know, giving out all this free advice on YouTube? I started Jiu Jitsu back in 1989 with House and Gracie. I was still going to University of Hawaii, and that was a time when, as far as Jiu Jitsu goes, the only really people that, the only people who really taught Jiu Jitsu outside of Brazil there at that time were Gracie family members. So Halson was in Hawaii, Horian, uh, I think by 89, by 89, Hickson was in California, Hoyce was in California, I think Higgin Machado might have been there as well. And then everybody else kind of came eventually. Um, I, know, I think Pedro Saro might have come through there, I think um, Carlos Machado did, um, John Machado too, I think, and probably a number of other people that, that I'm not really familiar with. But uh, Hawaii was run by Halson and Southern California was run by Horian. So I came up on the, in the Hawaii garage days. So there were, there were several people that were still ahead of me in Hawaii, namely Egan Inouye, Ensign Inouye, James Tanaka, you know, all black belts now. When I got there, Homolo Barros was the assistant of Helsin. Being that I did learn under Helsin first, and if any of you know Helsin Gracie, Jiu-Jitsu is self-defense. It's not a sport to him, it's self-defense. That's how he says it. No can defense. When you come up with this, this whole, you're brought up in Jiu-Jitsu that we're, it's about fighting. And everybody who was there, you hardly had any professionals. They were college age kids, um, or maybe up to their 30s, and their whole thing was, they wanted to learn martial arts to fight. And Gracie Jiu Jitsu was the best fighting system that was around. So that's why they wanted to take it. And you would have some people that after training, they'd go to the clubs, and they'd deliberately go pick fights. And uh, as a way to test Jiu Jitsu, and they would win. And, and it just would kind of perpetuate it more and more. To kind of give you an idea of how the mentality goes, you know, one of, my, one of my first, I think my first week, we did no gi on Friday. Every Friday was no gi with Helsons at the time. And you'd put, one guy would put gloves on, he had one pair of gloves. There were these old beat up, ratty old stinky boxing gloves. And you'd put them on, you'd be in a guy's guard in this case, and I was going with another relatively new student, and he was there about a month. I, I was there, that was my first week and he was my size, and when Helson said go, this guy just lit up and just started punching my face. And up to that point in time, I had never been punched in the face that hard before. You know, I did get in fights, but when you, when you get in the fights, a lot of times it's, it's you know, the old, in the old Hawaiian false crack, bang, and the guy drops, fight's over. But I took this hit, and this hit, and this hit, and Helson is yelling at me, keep him close, keep him close, grab his head, pull him in. And, and every time I try to do it, he just punched my face, punched my face, and he was just drilling me. So I had to learn how to, how to get past the whole thing. I didn't just stop, 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 stop. I didn't do that. I just, I kept fighting through to try to get it. And eventually I did get it. And after I got it, and I, and I had clinched him in, and the house and said time, you know, when he couldn't, when, when my partner, his name was Jesse actually, when he couldn't get out from my grip because I was holding it so tight, then Helson called time, we stopped again, and I just thought, I had two things in my head. Number one was, what the hell was that? And number two was, this is awesome, right? I thought, wow, this, you know, I didn't realize that it was so simple. Who would have thought to get a guy close to prevent him from punching in the face, right? And it didn't matter if you were on your feet or playing guard, you know, when you're on your back, it's the same thing. And then you find out that, you know, like they talk about that whole peeling of the onion analogy, right? You'd, op you'd peel one layer of the onion off and there'd be more. You peel more and there's more. You keep peeling and you realize that jujitsu is so deep. I did a lot of things up until that point. Like every other kid, teenager, college age kid would do, you know, things that you, you, you look for as hobbies that interest you, right? So I played guitar some for, for several years, wanted to be a heavy metal guitarist, right? Um, I, uh, you know, I did some sports, I wrestled, I ran track, I paddled canoe for a few years. So I did all these kind of things, and I even took Kempo for a while, but it wasn't until I did Jiu Jitsu that I realized that this was something that I was legitimately hooked on. 
and I could not stop doing it. I would go to the gym too. I, was, I actually liked going to the gym, but for me it was all about jujitsu. And my mom would complain. I'd come home with black eye, with scratches, all kinds of things, and my mom would tell me, Ryan, I protected you all these years. Didn't let you play football because I didn't want you to have break, broken bones. Uh, didn't let you play a lot of stuff because I didn't want you to get hurt. But here you are, you start this jujitsu now and you're coming home hurt all the time. And I go, yeah, but mom, <laughs> I love it, right? I, I literally did. And it was, it was addicting for me, just like I'm sure it is for you, right? It was, it's no different. But the, the type of jujitsu that I learned back then was what we call the traditional Gracie Jiu Jitsu today. It used to be, it was just Gracie Jiu Jitsu, it didn't matter, there's no such thing as sport Jiu Jitsu, there's no BJJ, it was all Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And a lot of people today like to say it's all Gracie Jiu Jitsu, well I contend that it isn't because the Jiu Jitsu that I learned is not the same Jiu Jitsu as I see other people learning. And it was always Jiu Jitsu is a fight, so you need to do things in a way that will protect you. Now if we're wearing the gi, it just so happens there's a few more handles, but everything else you do is, is the same thing. There, there's no difference. And that's, you know, whereas people, they kind of break it out completely different, gi and no gi. In fact, you have some schools where they don't do gi at all, and you have people getting belts in no gi, right? Oh, I'm a blue belt in no gi. I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, what the hell is that? There's no such thing. You, know, it, you have to be able to fight with whatever you're wearing, whether you have a jacket on with a t-shirt on, a polo shirt, no shirt, rash guard, whatever, you never know where you're gonna be because in true self-defense form, you have to be ready to fight in whatever environment you are in. Whereas people have so specialized jujitsu now that it's not really like that anymore. So after I graduate college, I moved to California. I moved, I moved deliberately to Torrance, California so I could train at the Gracie Academy <clears throat> because I got a degree in finance. There really was no job for me in Hawaii so I had to move to Southern California. Well, actually, I could have moved anywhere for what I wanted to do, I probably would have, been, would have been better off in New York, Chicago, or San Francisco. Uh, but I decided I was gonna go as far north as LA and as far east as LA, so guess where I ended up. I uh, called Jorge and Gracie up and said, hey, um, I'm gonna be moving to the area, where should I live? He says, well, I live in Torrance. So I thought, okay, good enough, that's where I'm gonna live. So that's how I ended up in, in a bad part of town that really wasn't Torrance, but that's another story. But what happened was that allowed me to be five miles away from the Gracie Academy. So I could train there every day. The problem was it was very expensive. It was, in 1992, it was $120 a month, I think, for twice a week. Whereas at Helsin School in Hawaii in 1989 to 92, it was $80 a month for three times a week, and it was $40 for a 30-minute private. So I took uh, weekly privates over at Helsin's house um, for $40, plus I spent the $80 for the tuition. So. I think back then I spent was at $240 a month on jujitsu. This is back in 1992, um, is what I paid for jujitsu. And, and come to find out, Dave paid even more than that uh, because at the Gracie Academy, they had more opportunities for him to train, but it was all privately trained, uh, private training or semi-private. So it cost him more, but with him it was, you know, how much can you, know, I think in our video he was talking about how um, he was just giving them all the money, you know, can I just keep buying lessons? He just wants to buy lessons. And, and that's kind of what I did as well to a certain degree because I was just so hooked on it. So I moved to California and that's where I meet Dave. I meet him in 1992 actually and he was a four stripe purple, I was like a two stripe blue and he just smashed me and I, I'd never been smashed like that before. I mean I get beaten, there's nothing, you know, every purple belt would beat me at the time because back then every purple belt could beat pretty much every blue belt. There, you wouldn't have a blue belt that could match up to a purple belt, otherwise they were a purple belt. But I trained under Hoyce and Horian at the time and uh, eventually I moved to Hickson as well when I found out Hickson was no longer at the Gracie Academy. He had, he had his Pico Boulevard Academy, so that's how I ended up there. And back then, there was a period of time where you could train in both, and that's what I did. I trained both at Gracie Torrance and at Hickson's place. And eventually got to the point where they had to kind of split it off. It got to be, you have to choose. So Dave and me and a few other people, we chose Hickson's place and several other people obviously chose Gracie Torrance. So I trained there for a number of years, but that's also where I met Fabio Santos. So one of the things that you learn in jiu-jitsu if you're just kind of getting new into it is that the people that you meet, you're gonna meet a ton of people. And 10, 20 years from now, you and other people are all gonna be black belts in jiu-jitsu. And it's a, it's a brotherhood that you, you form that's kind of a, a, it's a great feeling to have. You know you can kind of call them whenever you need anything or you're in town. Um, in fact, I still keep in touch with a lot of my Hawaii friends uh, that were training 
at the same time I was. So the Onzuka brothers who run O2 martial arts in Hawaii and uh, Todd Tanaka who runs his own school down in Hawaii as well. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, I keep in touch with them um, pretty regularly. And uh, my cousin uh, who runs uh, Taco Jiu Jitsu, which is our affiliate in Hawaii, you know, he started training in 95, 95 or 96. He, he's been training for a long time too. In fact, he got his black belt before me. <clears throat> and what happened was there's a period of time after I left Hickson's Academy because Hickson was fighting, so he was hardly around. Me knowing that Hickson was the greatest at the time, I thought, shoot, you know, he's never gonna lose. Uh, and, and if I wanna learn Jiu Jitsu, I have to go elsewhere. And I didn't really realize that Hickson was the best because of his technique at that time. I thought it was because of his physicality, because he was far more flexible than everybody. He was stronger. He was bigger than his brothers, uh, muscle-wise and weight-wise. He was shorter than them, but you know he was just a, a lot better built for jujitsu. I, I was at Hickson's. I got my purple belt, and I think my first two degrees from there. And then I moved over to Ken Gabrielson School. Ken Gabrielson was also Dirty Dozen. Uh, member just like Dave was, but he got his, his black belt second. I think Dave was probably fifth or sixth. I spent some time over at Ken Gabrielson's, <clears throat> and uh, that's that was my first jump out of the Elio Gracie umbrella. Uh, but you know, Ken did learn un in the garage as well. But he was under Jesus and Gracie, who was Rodrigo Gracie's father, and that's where I met Rodrigo as well. Good guy, um, phenomenal jujitsu as well. And and I got to meet some people, and, and from then on, for about the next. 10 or 15 years, I was on the other side of the family. So I was starting to learn the Gracie Baja style of Jiu Jitsu because uh, Rodrigo spent a lot of time at Gracie Baja when he was in Brazil, so he tended to gravitate toward that style of Jiu Jitsu. So that's what I was learning a lot and then trained under Brad, Brad Jackson, who's a friend of mine who we were at Gracie Torrance together, we were at Hickson's together, and then we were at Ken Gabelson's together. Trained under him for a number of years, but during that time I was a purple belt and I wasn't doing much training. And many of you know that there's about a 10 year period of time where I hardly trained at all. I, I knew that I wanted to keep training, but it just really, I didn't have the heart to train all the time. And, and I didn't have the discipline because I was then chasing money. Now, a lot of people do that when we're in our 20s and 30s, you think to yourself, you know, I just wanna, I wanna be a billionaire. And you're gonna try to do everything you can to try to get to that point. You're gonna work the long hours and do what you have to do. And, you know, and then you realize when you hit your 30s and 40s that, mm, you know, maybe that's not so important to me anymore. And you start to kind of, as you get wiser, start to realize what your priorities are. I did eventually find my way back to Dave Kama because by then Hickson had moved to Brazil. I wanted to go back to Hickson's place, but it, Dave was closer to me and and I found him, um, and one of my students found him, private students, and I ended up training with him. This is back in like 2008, 2009. I'd already had two knee surgeries by then. You know, I was already in my 40s. Started training with Dave and just realized that uh, this was my home. You know, it just felt right training with Dave because the jujitsu that he does, it brought me back to the self-defense side. I had realized several years before that that Hickson was truly the best because of his technique. There was a reason why and it wasn't his physicality. It was just something else about him that made him the best. And it also made me realize that I need to learn the basic techniques and I need to get better at the basic techniques. So you, you know, I've, I've done some videos on fundamentals versus advanced on the Pareto Principle which talks about how to, how to narrow your focus to those techniques that are the most important techniques. Not the fanciest, not the flashiest, flashiest, but the best, the ones that have the most ap ap applicability, right? Passing guard, playing closed guard, not open guard, uh, holding mount, getting out of mount, all your basic things. It's, that's what Dave has kind of brought me back into, you need to focus here. And that's what we do for our students as well. So all these years that I've been on both sides of the family, so to speak, of jiu-jitsu, on the Carlos line as well as the Elio line, has kind of made me what I am today, and it's, it's, it, it's helped me to see with wide open eyes um, what I came from, what I ended up in for a little while, and then I could make a choice. Because I'd spent about 10 years on each side of the family by then, by the time I found Dave's, and then I decided that I needed to be back on the traditional side. And it wasn't really my idea to have a school, but when I moved over here, I needed a place to train, and being that nobody really does traditional jujitsu that I know of here, Maybe there is somebody, I just don't know of them yet. If I knew of them, I might have been over there, but there wasn't, so I had to do like Dave does and just create my own training partners. So that's how, the, um, that's how I talked to Dave and I said, okay, let's open another campus over here, and that's how Kama Jiu Jitsu became here in Texas. Now, we've got a number of students. We've got Judo in our programs. We've got, now we've got an expanded kids program, and we're starting to kind of gel here. 
But I'd like to get the word out to, to more people because I see jiu-jitsu going the sport route. And that's fine, it, it's helping to spread the art, but it's not spreading the whole art, right? It's only spreading a portion of the art, and it's a, it's a portion of the art that's becoming more and more specialized, and they're forgetting about what's all out here, which to me, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is not only ground grappling, and everybody seemed to think of Jiu-Jitsu, oh, I wanna do my Jiu-Jitsu, they're, they're thinking I'm only doing my ground grappling. Right? And then I go to judo class to learn how to do stand-up, or I go to wrestling to do, I, I train wrestling to learn stand-up, and, and then I, I do my, my Muay Thai and my kickboxing, and, and then now that you have, you have MMA. Now, the jiu-jitsu practitioner isn't necessarily gonna be the best in any of those, but they'll be good at everything. Like I said, not the best at anything, but they'll be good at everything. Now, that doesn't mean that a, a practitioner can't be the best at something. For instance, I would contend that Hicks and Gracie's probably the best grappler that has ever lived. But a lot of his time, if not half of his time, was spent doing self-defense. Maybe, and then there's a good portion of his time that he spent doing yoga and his breathing exercise and all that. So the amount of time that he actually spent grappling was probably a minority of his time. But yet, he ended up being the best grappler of all time. He's not only a grappler, I see him as an all-around fighter. And, and I learned that from Dave as well. Dave is an all-around fighter, right? And that's what I want to be, and that's what I want our students to be. So in putting these videos together, why did I do these videos? Well, it was because Dave told me initially he didn't want me to put any technical videos online. And I got that, because I put some on early. If you look really old, you look on the, on the BJJ Professor, or maybe in the early videos, maybe I don't know if Rusty's been able to move in the Kama Jiu Jitsu, but if you look on the BJJ Professor on YouTube, uh, you'll see, or you pull my name up, Ryan Young, you'll see that I did some videos back in my garage. And this is back in like nine, in what, 20, 2012, maybe 2013, I'm not sure anymore when I did them. Um, and I put a few of them up just to kind of put a couple of them up. And then Dave said, okay, you know, that's enough um, of the technical videos. Because at that time, Hickson hadn't produced any kind of videos or DVDs or anything like that. And Dave wanted to honor Grandmaster Hickson by, if, if Hickson says he doesn't put him online, then don't put him online. And I think a lot of it had to do with, it's very hard to teach the invisible concepts and connection over a video, because those are feel parts of jujitsu. You know, you have the parts of jujitsu where I can tell you what to do so you, you hear it, I can show you what to do so you see it, but it's hard for me to make you feel a lot of what we do, how to feel the pressure, right? and how to do it correctly, and how to connect. So those are things that are, that are hard to teach on video, and it's hard to even explain how to do it on video. So I think because of that, Hickson didn't want his jiu-jitsu taught wrong, maybe. You know, he would rather do it, but he just wasn't up to, it, up to it at that point in life of doing things on video. So Dave said, just don't do videos on technical. So I stopped doing those types of videos. And then what I started to do is kind of just talk about the, the mentality of it. And a lot of it was because I'd have students that would ask me questions. And then a new student would come in, ask me the same question. A third new student comes in, ask me the same question. I thought, you know what, let's just put in a video. And that's why you'll see in the video, you'll see me sitting in front of my phone, and I'm sitting eating at Starbucks, right? And you see me kind of talking like this, trying to be really quiet, because I didn't want to make ass in front of everyone, thinking, you know, who's this guy on, you know, sitting on his phone doing a video? Right? Because I think to myself, you know, I look at all these you know, people, and they're, they're kind of doing selfies and all that, and I just think, you know... It makes me chuckle. So if it makes me chuckle, I don't want to be the reason somebody else chuckles, right? So it's even worse because I'm sitting in front of them, I'm talking into my phone, I'm obviously filming a video, right? So what's this guy filming himself for, right? So anyway, that, that's just my own, my own weird feelings about that. And then Rusty comes along and then, and it's two years ago actually. Yeah, it is two years ago, I'm right? At, I think we started doing so we didn't start YouTube until June, but you started having me do stuff in March. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was the initial one filmed in the Mid-City studio. Yeah. And, 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 this, and this channel has since grown. It's my phone there. <laughs> oh, you, know, <clears throat> you know what it is? I get all these um, gi manufacturers. They just uh, shoot all their videos over to me, and it just makes my phone go nuts sometimes. But yeah, that, I mean, that's why initially the videos, it was more for my students, so they could kind of can watch the videos and get their questions answered. But it's turned out it's, it's helped a lot of you as well. I'm amazed that I have done these many videos. I thought maybe I'd do 40, 50 of them, and that would be the end of it, but 
How many are we up to now? A couple hundred? Yeah, we're up to. Yeah, we're up to a lot of videos, and and if they help you, I'm I'm really thankful that they do because, you know, we put some time into it, and sometimes they're random thoughts, sometimes they're actual topics that we're asked to do a video on, and you know, really, what I want you all to feel is I want you to feel what I feel for the art, and jujitsu is one of the most important things in my life, and the reason why is it's because it's done so much uh, on the positive end for me. Right? And, and because of the art, I've been able to influence other people's lives as well. And I never really thought of it that way until I hear enough times, hey, professor, you know, thanks for doing this for me and teaching me this because it's really helped me here. Um, you know, you think about, uh, you know, that kid Ricky, um, his, his last day here was yesterday. I mean, he's, he's gotten to the point where he, he's senior in high school, about to graduate, wants to kind of branch off and do his own thing because he was originally brought here by his father. Uh, so his father and him kind of did a father-son thing. Uh, but now that Ricky's getting out of high school, you know, he's, he's wanting to do his own thing. Maybe he'll come back. I hope he will. But, you know, we did get him up to Blue Belt. And, you know, as you saw in a previous video, he was able to defend himself actually twice uh, successfully. And it, it, it helped his confidence in life. It helped him walk taller and straighter. Um, it helped him lose a lot of weight. And it helped him have the confidence now that... Uh, you know, in fact, he walks with a little bit of a swagger now. It's actually kind of funny when we deal with him. Whereas before, when he first, when we first met, you know, he was a very timid kid. I'd always have to kind of tell him, like, what are you saying? I can't hear you. Talk louder. I, I don't know how many times. I was talking to his dad about it yesterday. I'd, I'd be yelling at him, talk louder. You know, I cannot hear you. Because he just kind of mumbled like this. And so, but jujitsu's changed his life. And he'll realize it as he gets older. Right? He started, he, he's 18 years old. He started when he was 15. So you don't really understand what you've got at that age until you're probably well into your 20s or 30s or maybe even your 40s. But I'm happy that I have been part of his life in doing that as well as all our other members as well. And I only wish that for you as well. So find your good teacher, watch the videos and see if the videos can help you. If you have any questions, always shoot in the comments below. Uh, create a new comment. Don't reply to an old comment because if you shoot a new comment, then it'll hit the top of the hit the top of the queue for me. But if you reply to an old comment, I may never get to it. So if you don't see a reply, chances are I didn't get to it. Um, so just shoot a new reply and then that, that or a new reply to my video, and then that will help me see it. And I'd be happy to do a video on your if you're on your topic or your question if it seems something that I, I think that other people will will learn from as well. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Uh, hope that's enough to kind of give you an idea about who I am. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them toward me. Toward me. Um, if you've got any criticisms, I'm always good from as well. My skin's pretty thick now. I can deal with all, I can deal with all you keyboard warriors now. I'm a black belt in that too now. <laughs> Rusty laughing. But anyway, if there's any way I can help you, go ahead and uh, shoot me a comment. You can also subscribe to our Patreon channel. It's going to be helping you. I, I promise it's going to help you with your jujitsu a lot. Uh, we have our Kama Jiu Jitsu online website that will be up and running very soon. Um, it's going through testing phases by the time you see this. And um, we'll, we'll roll this out probably in June or July of this year, which is 2019. And, uh, and this is going to be pretty awesome. So it's still going to be growing by the time we introduce it. But it is going to be something that will be huge and will help many people uh, learn the art of Hicks and Gracie Jiu Jitsu that we do here at Kama Jiu Jitsu. Anyway, hit the links below if there's anything in there that would interest you and you want to help the channel because it does take a lot of time and money to put this channel together and get this content out to you. And any help that you want to give us by simply buying one of our products, you know, we don't ask for any money, uh, we'd, we'd appreciate it. But if not, and you want to just, uh, you know, consume the content for free, that's fine too. That's why it's up here. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care. Happy training. Bye-bye now.